Hi, uh, today I'm going to talk about the move, I'm sorry, about the rotate tool and the protractor tool. Although they have different functions, you interact with them in very much the same way, so it's good to learn them together. Let's give ourselves a little something to rotate and use the protractor on. So here's a polygon. Oh, good six-sided, I appreciate that. That's what I want to use. And we'll just say a rate of 30. I'm going to pull that out, maybe, say five inches and um, let's triple click on that looks like a garden paver to me so paver hmm. you know it occurs to me that we would like to be able to see what direction this thing is rotated so I'm gonna actually gonna put a little arrow on the back of this thing let's maybe create another polygon I'm gonna type once I'm in the polygon tool 3s can give me a triangle All right three-sided all right, and then I'm going to create a little rectangle. It's more like a house than a than an arrow, but it'll do just fine. Hit B, bucket, a little shape on that. Good. All right, so now we have our paper that we want to play around with. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the rotate tool, simply because it's a little easier to see. Um, I'm going to either click on this rotate button or more, much more likely I'm going to hit Q for rotate which is the uh, SketchUp default for rotate. Uh, R was taken clearly for rectangle so Q I guess was free if not too far from the R in the alphabet so it's a good choice. So let's see here we want to rotate this paver let's um, well, let's say something about the rotate tool first. The rotate tool and the protractor tool are what I call three click tools. Every time you use them you're going to click three times with a mouse button. Um, you might enter and hit uh, a number and hit, and hit enter and I call that a click as well. So we have these three click tools. The first click it may be the hardest to think about. What it does is it tells us what axis we want to rotate about and finds a point on that axis. So if I would like to rotate around this axis right here, let me show it to you. I'm gonna, this edge right here. Now this edge is perpendicular to the blue axis. In fact, if I come up here to camera and I put a parallel projection, it's very easy to see that each of these pieces is parallel to this blue axis. So that, that uh, edge right there is what I want to rotate around. So I'm going to hit Q. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point on that axis and then I'm going to well I've got a couple of choices here. I'm going to end up clicking there but you'll notice that, that I have this protractor shaped circle disk that's floating around as part of my cursor <clears throat> and as I move it if I move it down here on the edge it flips to become uh, parallel to that edge. If I move it over here it flips to become parallel to that edge. Um, you'll notice it changes color as well so if you look at this top plane of the uh, paper, you'll see that it is parallel and I'm going to move it downward just a little bit so you can see. See the green axis and the red axis are parallel to that, but the blue axis is per per perfectly perpendicular to it. It's the only axis it is. So SketchUp thinks of this face as a blue face because it can be defined, the direction can be defined by that blue axis. Likewise, this is a, is a red face because it's the red axis. We don't actually have any green faces on this particular paper. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate around this which is a blue line. That is a line that is perpendicular, I'm sorry, parallel to the blue axis. In order to do that, I need to have my disk my, that's with my cursor um, blue, that is aligned with a blue axis. Now there are a couple ways to do that. First, I can be sitting on a blue plane. Um, that works well. However, as you come close to one of these, you may find, oh, I'm accidentally moving back and forth between um, inferences. Uh, because I'm a corner, it's attached to three different faces. 
in order to lock that in, that inference in, we do what we always do when we want to lock an inference. We hold down the shift key. There, I just held down the shift key. Now I can move everywhere I want, anywhere I want, and it stays blue because I was on the blue ax on a blue plane when I uh, hit the shift key. Like going to shift key, I can be on a different plane, and we see that um, we can stick to a red axis. But for now, let's stick with the blue. So holding down shift, I can then click on that endpoint. Now there's another way I can uh, make it a blue axis. I can go to the endpoint, and now when I click, I can actually click and drag in the blue direction. For instance, let me show you the first way. So here's click one. All right. Now I'm going to hit escape to get out of that. If you start a multi-click type of procedure, you can always hit escape, and it'll back you out of it. Here, I clearly I don't have a good inference here in the blue direction, but I am on that that point. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag in the blue direction. And you'll notice that um, it became blue to let me know it's going on in that direction. I could in fact be in another direction. I could rotate in the green axis. Uh, that's something that is good to be able to do because there are no green faces here to lock onto. Uh, once you've locked onto one, you can then hold shift. Um, to lock that that direction, of course. But sticking with blue for now, we are going to uh, well actually let me back out of that. Just do a standard click. And um, let's see, what are we going to do? We are going to make our second click. Our second click is what we call the reference click. It's what where the z where we start counting degrees from. So, for instance, this edge here may be where we want to measure from. We know that this edge sweeping over to this edge is 120 degrees because we have a regular hexagon. And so, but we could also say this is zero and this is 120 degrees. Um, but what we'd like to do is we would like to tell SketchUp where we want our zero to be. And what I find is easiest to do is to pick an edge that you would like to correspond to something else. So for instance, if I want to rotate this 120 degrees, um, then this edge here would correspond to this edge here after I rotated it. So I'm going to click on it once, and I can click on an endpoint on the edge. I can click on somewhere else on the edge. So now I've clicked twice. So we still have one more click to go. If I move my mouse now that I've clicked, you can see it's moving. And in fact, much like the move tool, I tap control and it moves a copy. I'm going to start moving a copy simply because it's going to let you see how far I've moved more easily. So I was sitting over here and I take that reference edge that I just created and I'm going to move it over here to this edge. And then I'm going to hit the uh, mouse button again. You'll notice in the bottom right hand corner it says angle 120.0 meaning I've moved it exactly 120 degrees. So there's my last and my third and last click. And much like the move tool, I can now uh, make multiple copies if I like. So I can say star 2 and now I have my original and my first copy and my second copy. First copy has moved 120 degrees. Second copy has moved um, 240 degrees. If I do star 3, I can do that. And what I've just done is I've, there's actually three copies. There's an original, copy one, copy two, and then sitting on top of this other one, there's another copy of that. Um, that's a little useless, so I'm not going to do that. But star two, star one even is allowed. I could type slash two, and that creates this, this overlapping one at 60 degrees. Uh, in this case, it's not particularly useful. So let's just go back to one copy. All right, so that's the basic way that we use the um, rotational tool. We can, you know, always play the games with axes of rotation. But remember, it's click once for some point that's on the axis that you want to rotate around, and you're going to have to have your disk facing in the appropriate direction for the direction of that axis of rotation. So for instance, if I want to rotate around this edge right here, 
right. I can drag it right in that direction. Now I'm locked on that endpoint. I'm along that edge. And now I can just create a reference edge with my second click. I begin to rotate it around. And let me hit control and move the whole viewpoint a little bit so you can see what I'm rotating. All right, there's 90 degrees. Let me rotate a little further so you can see a little better. All right, it was here. Rotate it up around that axis. All right, and I can I can type. I want to go 125 degrees. There. That's 125 degrees. Okay. So with that in mind, let's switch over to the protractor. Uh, for me, that's shift P, but you can find the protractor under tools somewhere. Yeah, there. Protractor. And it looks very much like the rotate um, disc. You use it exactly the same way, except instead of moving an object which you've selected, it's going to create a guideline wherever you rotated your um, wherever you rotated your reference edge to. So I'm going to rotate in the blue direction. Here's my uh, axis rotation. Here's where I start. And that should be 30 degrees. If you look at the bottom right hand corner, 30 degrees. But I could say type in 15 and it's going to create that guideline very much like the tape measure tool does. This is incredibly useful when you're doing things like dovetails. So uh, that is the protractor tool, very similar to the rotation tool if you have any questions, please let me know.